Welcome everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Joshua Platt. Um, I head up our product team here at SmartDraw. My co-presenter today is Evan Golden. He's our lead solutions architect and our PM for Visual Script product. Uh, first of all, housekeeping to start. Uh, we are recording uh, this session today. So uh, if you couldn't make it drop off or you, you can't, I uh, had a colleague who couldn't make it, uh, we'll be sending a recording of this webinar. We'll also be answering all questions at the very end. So if you have a question during the webinar, we ask you to enter it into the uh, Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom window. Uh, and we'll try to get to as many of these questions at the end. We've built in time for this, um, definitely. So let's jump in. Uh, today's webinar is going to be about uh, effective decision making um, and using reports to help with that. Drift Services is a great tool for ITSM. It's why we all use it and the last and fastest growing product. For IT focused teams, transferring to service orgs and growing more agile, Jira Service Desk flexibility makes it a perfect fit for the challenges of dealing with service outages. Ever increasing demand for internal requests and the constant threat of security, many other IT driven activities. Its flexibility also makes it a great solution for boundary teams such as HR, finance, and facilities, which further expands the amount of data captured in the Jira service desk. Having all that data in one place is great for operations, and if you can report on it in a consumable way, great for visibility. Today, we're going to look at the basic reporting tools built into Jira service desk and some best practices for moving beyond them to get a complete story by combining metrics and context and delivering it to the right people so they can make data-driven decisions. We're gonna start off by looking at Jira Service Desk strengths, looking at what reports it has and what it's really good at. Then we're gonna look at the reporting built into it. Then we're gonna get in, move into showing our best practices for moving beyond basic metrics and then telling a more complete story with context. I'll take a brief look at what Visual Script is and show a demo of what that complete story for ITSM and ITIL reporting will look at. So Jira Service Task has many strengths. It is built on the battle-tested base of Jira, so we know it operates at scale. And of course, it integrates well into the full Atlassian stack, allowing for tracking of activity from customer input to development to release. Perhaps its greatest strength is the flexibility and how it drives both standardization and agility in our workflows. Alassian's own description highlights exactly this point. Flexible, collaborative, rapid delivery. Service Desk is about collaborating to deliver service quickly. They apply these strengths into helping us deliver service into four areas of ITSM. And it does this exceptionally well. Being easier to configure than ServiceNow, well integrated with other tools in the stack like Jira, Confluence, and Bitbucket, workflows can be created that connect all the dots, allowing a holistic capture of activity across all functional areas. They include some important fields out of the box for capturing activity around these areas. For incident management, responding to unplanned events, problem management, looking at a series of incidents, trying to find that root cause, change management, trying to find a way to uh, minimize follow-on effects of the changes to address problems and incidents, and rolling it into asset management as well, the various components. Once all of this is captured, it is time to report on this data for management. ITIL 4 calls out monitoring reporting as a key management practice. Reporting is the glue between what happens in the trenches, like dealing with an unplanned outage, planned firmware updates, or data migrations, and decision makers responsible for keeping things running on time and on budget. These data-driven decisions are so important, especially during something like an outage. As such, there are some built-in reports that provide basic performance metrics to get started with right inside of Jira. Let's take a look. Jira provides several default and also some custom reports in service desk. 
They provide a line chart to show over time the metric you request. Great to see how many tickets resolve per interval as an example. They have things like SLA success rate, incidents by priority, SLA breached and goals, and time to resolution is just some examples. You can use a customer report to add a single field and get a similar report like this. Follow the pattern always. Your KPI on top is a number, your line chart to show over time how you're performing, and the raw data on the table below. You can show just by any of these fields. They're basic, they're helpful. They don't answer the question of why. Some decisions can be made off these metrics, but there's so much context missing. It's difficult to make strategic, critical decisions without knowing the context. And our best practices encourage using in-context reports to tell a larger story around how our service organization is performing. Evan, can you walk us through what that larger reporting story can look like? Sure, thank you, Joshua. So um, Joshua discussed how great Jira Service Desk is for managing your ITSM workflows in the areas of incident problem asset and change management. It was shown that Jira Service Desk is great at reporting for individual teams, specifically individual metrics as they relate to those individual teams. So there are so many metrics and together they can be valuable towards better decision making. In today's world, we need to think beyond single teams and single metrics as it relates to decision making. We need to tell the entire story and think holistically. Let's walk through an example that many of us have experienced. There are a lot of out incidents coming in reporting that the in-house intranet is down. We discover that there's a problem with the routers. The root cause identified is that the firmware needs to be updated and this leads to our change request. Once approved, the change request leads to an item in the backlog to update that firmware. The backlog item is deployed and the problem is resolved. The only way we can really understand what is going on is by telling the whole story with all of the data. So how do we do this? We must first start by understanding that different data is needed and it has to work together. Going back to our example, the incidents that are coming in are all bucketed to the same system. This helps us identify that there is a problem with the internal network. They came in via different data sources to include phone, email, chat. We might want to find out why people are not using our portal for most of their requests. The problem is a high impact and a high urgency. We might ask ourselves, how often do we have problems of high impact and urgency that relate to our internet? The change risk is high and the change reason is a repair. How often do we have to repair the internal network because of problems? And finally, it took us four hours to approve the emergency change request. We might ask is if, the, if this is the average for this type of change or problem. As you can see, there are many different data points, but again, they all work together. Together, these data points that are all available out of the box with Jira Service Desk can help us identify and ask ourselves questions like, do we budget to upgrade our internal network equipment next year? Do we need to make our portal more available for our customers so that they use it more often? Do we need to train our staff for things like keeping firmware up to date? Do we need to revisit our change management process? Additionally, this data comes from different teams. IT needs to talk to network engineering. Network engineering needs to possibly even talk to software engineering. Hardware engineering may need to be involved. Service managers are certainly involved. Executives need to see the information to make decisions. And of course, customers are always involved as well. We must think holistically and our approach must be agile in nature so we can move fast and across teams. Next, we really need to consider different representations of the data. Now, this is not just a matter of preference and how we like to see it. It can also provide another perspective. These different perspectives can help drive decisions. Seeing data working together can help us answer those critical questions and the flexibility to visualize that data in different ways can help. For example, having a bar chart to see incidents that are high priority that also relate to our internal network system is a good report to have on your dashboard. Maybe you add another pie chart to see all internal network incidents reported by different sources can help us identify why people are not using the portal. Uh, how about seeing a timeline that shows all incidents reported that relate to a single internal network outage or problem. Maybe a report that shows the interconnectivity of a single problem and it shows all linked incidents, link changes, backlog events, backlog items, excuse me. 
Finally, a timeline of events from when the first incident related to the problem is reported all the way until problem resolution. So organizing data is so important as well. Having all of your data visually represented as needed in a single dashboard is key. What is equally important is the positioning of those reports in the dashboard. So you can answer all your questions with, those visual, with that visual communication provided. Perhaps having different dashboards or views for different roles might be the right approach because those different roles will ask different questions. Seeing the reports in a dashboard together, reading in an order that makes sense and helps answer questions can decrease the time needed to make these decisions. This also offers collaboration with the data residing in the source of truth. So the data working together with the right representations and organized in the right way, it helps us tell that story. It helps us make those data-driven decisions. These decisions are now based off of multiple data points working together. So going back to our ex example, if we decide to make that investment in the new internal network equipment, we will know it was based off of real data collected over time that together helped us come to this conclusion. So how do we become more agile across teams or better collaborate? How do we make those smarter data-driven decisions? How do we see the big picture? It might seem easy, but really it's with flexible reporting. It's not just the amount of data. Data is important, but the right data is more important. The reporting needs to be flexible so that different representations can be consumed by your customers. It needs to be organized and it needs to tell the entire story. Now that story might be one report. It might be 15 reports. But finally, they all reside together so that you can easily see the big picture. Now as an organization scales, this will likely need to be done with a marketplace application working with Jira Service Desk. Today we'll be demoing one of our products, Visual Script for Jira. So before we get started, what is Visual Script? It's a reporting tool for the entire Atlassian stack. And it currently specializes in reporting for ITSM, ITIL, DevOps, SAFE, or all other Agile at scale frameworks. It's a marketplace app and it's avail available for both Jira and Confluence. And it's currently available in server and cloud. All reports live in Jira dashboard gadgets and Confluence page macros. Now it's a reporting tool. It's got a long list of built-in reports. I will demo uh, some of those as well. Um, it's also a developer's tool and custom scripts can be created in JavaScript with accessing the APIs in both cloud and server. So what you'll see in the demo today is a combination of both. You'll see built-in reports that are currently available out of the box and custom scripts that we've created that will be built-in scripts soon. So let's go ahead and get into our demo. So like I said, with Visual Script for Jira, everything lives in a dashboard gadget. Every report lives in an individual gadget within the dashboard. So when you first install the add-on, you get a custom gadget type called Visual Script. So once you add it, you'll see it creates a series of folders. Now, when you look at the My Reports section at the top and these folders that house scripts, uh, these are all of your custom scripts. These are the scripts that are created on the back end with the text editor, with JavaScript. Um, they're also the scripts that you can create off of our built-in reports. So we have a bunch of built-ins. I'll show you some of those. And in the back end, those are actually templates. So you can go in there, you get access to the scripts, the parameters. You can edit them to make them your own. And once you create them, they will show up in these folders and you can drag and drop on the admin interface. You can import, export between instances, et cetera. Now the user also has access to the built-in scripts. These are the ones that come out of the box. You can see with ITSM, we have six current built-in scripts. This number is growing month to month. And we also even have like the scaled agile section, which, uh, which has a bunch of scripts as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our demo of the ITSM reports. When you first launch a report in Visual Script, it's gonna ask you for one or more parameters. Now, these parameters are used to reach into JIRA, find the relationships and the data based on that criteria you entered in these parameters, and then create and render a report into the gadget. The first report we're gonna show is our health gauge report. Now, this report is a gauge, and what it's showing is the percentage of tickets that have breached all of your SLAs together and each of your individual SLAs. So it's really showing a good high-level health um, in a gauge of your service desk. So project key is our first parameter. Then we create, then we enter a start and end date. Now the start and end date is used to time box the report. Uh, we enter issue types 
And then next we enter, if we want to include the breaches in the ongoing cycle. So do we include the breaches, uh, the tickets that have breached SLA in the ongoing SLA cycle? Finally, it's a sample size. So if you leave it at zero, it will sample all. Uh, you can enter a number in here, and if you have a huge Jira service desk in, instance and you want to just create, just look at an individual sample, you can do that here as well. So I'm going to run this report. Now, as this report is running, um, I, there's a lot of data in here, so it's going to take just a few seconds, but what you're going to see is a gauge. And in this gauge, you will see the meter measuring red to green, and it's going to show the percentage of tickets that have breached your SLA. So 24% of our tickets overall with, based on the criteria of those parameters, have breached SLA. Um, now, what about each individual SLA? So this tells us overall the health of our service desk. So I want to dig into to this expanded view, and then you can see the four different gauges, and these are, these are gauges for each of our individual SLAs. So you'll notice that 15% time to close after resolution, 21% still in the green for time to first response, but time to resolution is sitting at 34% and it's in the yellow. So this will help us get an idea, just digging a little deeper as to what is causing the problem, which SLA. If you wanna get into some more details around the SLA KPIs, as an example, you can use the SLA report. Now the SLA report is using, um, so what I should say is that Visual Script has a lot of different interesting charts, which I'll show you today. We also have the ability to create these in context reports. So for the SLA report, it's a grid, which I'll now show you. So basically you enter the project key, the start date, the end date, the issue types, and if you wanna include that, those breaches from the ongoing cycle. So I'm gonna run this report and it's gonna be a grid. We use a grid for a lot of our different reports across all of our solutions. And you, but for this specific report, we're looking at the individual KPIs for all of our SLAs. So on the far left here, you could see each of the SLA categories. Now it's broken down by issue type. So you see there are three for incident and three for service request. On the right of that, you'll see the average time to meet those SLAs. So this is giving us the average time to respond and the average time to resolve per issue type. You'll see that we also get the number of tickets and the percentage of tickets that have met SLA. The number of tickets and the percentage of tickets that have breached SLA. These last three ones are interesting because we might know the number of tickets and percentage that are breached, but how are met, but how do we perform in more, a little more detail? So here we're showing the number of tickets that have met SLA with less than 30 minutes till SLA breach, less than 60 minutes until SLA breach, and finally greater than 60 minutes till SLA breach. Now, so you'll see here we can dig in a little deeper and get the percentage of tickets that have breached SLA. Here we can get the more, more detailed KPIs. The next report is our mean time to respond and resolve report. So we could see the mean time to resolve and respond per issue type here, but this is overall across that entire time frame. For this report, it's going to show a line chart and it's going to show us day over day what that mean time to respond and mean time to resolve is. So we enter the project key, another against, again, another start and end date, and the issue types. And when I run this report, it's going to be a few line charts. And in those line charts, you'll see day over day, what is my mean time to respond each day? And if I want to see that information in a little more detail with hyperlinks to the issues, I can click this expanded view. It's going to give me a table and it's going to give me day over day, the mean average in hours to respond, as well as you can click here and get to the issue navigator where the tickets are. Same thing with mean time to respond or resolve, resolve, excuse me. So you'll see day over day, mean time to resolve. And then you get that expanded view again with that table and the average time in days to resolve the tickets. So what we get in so far was we're telling this comprehensive story. We're working our way into more and more detail. Now the next report is interesting because we talked about those in context reports. So what Visual Script can create is things like timelines, flow charts, um, like I showed you the grids. And our time and status report is a flow chart report. So what we're doing here is we're framing it with a start and end date, the project key, and the issue type. So the issue type is incident. So it's going to show the incident workflow. And in the incident workflow, you'll see each of the individual statuses. Now, each of the individual statuses includes the average time that our tickets live in that status. 
Now we, we saw that we had an issue with time to resolution for incident, you know, sitting at 80% for that specific um, uh, issue type and that SLA, which is, you know, a high breach. So I can go into this report and I could see which days were, were I, were my time to resolution lower than it should be. And then I can go in here and I could see, this is my status that I transitioned out of for that specific SLA. Now, one day, two hours and 17 minutes, it's a lot, it's, it's pretty long. So we, under, we understand and identified our bottleneck at this point. The next one is our open versus resolved chart. So the idea with this chart is to show us in, in a time frame how many tickets were open and how many tickets were resolved. So let me run the report. It's going to be a pie chart. And ba basically what you're looking at is the number of tickets opened were in red. The number of tickets resolved are in orange. Ideally, in a perfect world, what you're looking at is a 50-50 split. You're looking at the fact that things that come in, the number that come in, are the number I can resolve. So it helps you understand what is your day, not day to day, but your velocity over a period of time of how many tickets your service desk can work through. And the next report is our capacity flow. So this report works really well with this one because with this report over a period of time, I can understand better yet how much work our teams can do and I can figure it out each day, right? So what we call that in this report is capacity. So the capacity I'm setting at 17 and what it's basically saying is in a given day, my service desk can complete and resolve 17 tickets. So we're going to enter the project key, again, the start date and the end date and the issue type along with that capacity. So what you'll see here is a line chart and that black line there is representing that 17, that high watermark, that capacity. The red line is showing day over day how many tickets were open, how many tickets were open each day. Now, there are a few things we can look at here. Um, one, I have these peaks that go over my resolution or my, my capacity line. So this could mean a few things. One, we don't have, potentially we don't have enough people that can complete that work. But really more importantly, let's look at how many tickets that, that we resolved that day because we could potentially move this line up depending on our, how, ma how many tickets over time we can complete. So we can use this report and this report together to identify that. So, uh, and then sim similarly with the dips, we can look at how many report, how many tickets we're actually resolving. We might have a reason for that, like someone was on vacation, or maybe we have a training issue that we need to resolve or a process issue that we need to resolve. So the next couple of reports I'm going to show you are our general reports. Well, what do I mean by that? So our general reports are reports that can be used. These are charts, and they can be used across your entire JIRA instance. They're reporting off of individual fields. So let's look at the parameters on our general line chart. What are we measuring? So we're looking at a line chart in our project, in our service desk, that is reporting off of status. So we want to see basically in the last seven days, and this is a drop down, in the last seven days, how many tickets were in each status per day. Now you'll see I can enter my issue types and finally, we can filter the data even deeper with the additional selection JQL. So here you can add JQL statement to further filter the data from what is, what is originally, or, uh, originally selected in the parameters themselves. So when I run the report, it's gonna be a line chart and you'll see there are six lines. Each one is represented by a status. You'll see day over day, uh, the number of tickets that lived in that status. Now, if I wanna see that and expand the view, I can do that as well. It'll give you each day, it'll give you the number of tickets per status with the hyperlink to the issue nav. We also have a custom uh, area chart, so general use area chart. Now, this one we're using in this specific use case to measure priority. We wanna see area chart of our priorities, number of tickets in priority over the last seven days. So project key, priority field, and you can take a look here, we can do custom fields as well. So you just do CF colon name of the custom field. Um, last seven days we're gonna use in the report, the issue types and the additional selection JQL. So when I run this report, it's gonna be what you would expect in an area chart, like what you've seen in your capacity flow diagrams in JIRA. And yeah, every day you can see the number of tickets per each status. So each day you'll see that number. And then I get that expanded view again, and I could see that each day 
number of tickets by status. Okay, and the next one is a general grid report. So we talked again about charts and in, in context reports. This report is a general report that you can use for, um, for creating a grid. Uh, and, and we use grids for, like I said, a lot of things. We use them for like PI boards in Agile. We use them for dependency reports in Agile. Here, what we're using it for is, well, it could be used across your entire JIRA instance, but here what we're doing is we're looking at our service desk and we're reporting off of status and priority. We wanna see the tickets that are in each status and priority cell by cell. So I enter my issue types. Do I only wanna show unresolved issues? So I'm gonna say true. And I can enter my additional JQL. So I'm looking at priority and highest, high, and medium. So I'm going to run this report, and it's going to show me a grid. In my grid, you, on the x-axis, you'll see each of the statuses. On the y-axis, you will see the, um, the uh, pr priorities. And then in each cell, you will see the tickets. Each card represents a ticket that is in that priority and that status. If I, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see a hyperlink to the issue, the um, actual summary of the issue, and the status of the issue itself. So it gives us a, a high-level view to see which tickets are in which status and which priority. So the next one is a general pie chart. So this is now another one of our general charts. This one's a pie version. Um, you'll see that what we're, triggering, what we're reporting off of is the component field. The component field is in Jira Service Desk is used to represent the system, the system in the service desk. So you'll see it defaults to a bunch of different options. So what we're gonna enter is the project key, that component field. You'll see a lot of these um, parameters are the same and that's on purpose. You want it to be very easy to use right out of the box. So you include issues with no value, we're gonna say false. Um, we include our issue types and we're gonna say uh, resolution is empty. We only wanna see unresolved issues. So you see now we have a pie chart. And in our pie chart, we each wedge represents one of the systems. You'll see the wedge with the largest amount of issues is our email and collaboration services. You'll also notice here that we get our expanded view. So you get that information again, that, la that layer deeper to give you that information and where you can click to get to that information. So finally on the general uh, reports is our bar, bar chart. And uh, our bar chart is being used here to report off of the source field. So this is a custom field in Jira Service Desk, and it's used to show where our tickets came from. Did it come from phone? Did it come from email? Did it come from the customer directly? It's a great report if we're noticing that we're responding to a lot of tickets that are not directly in the portal. This gives us that metric to see really uh, where, are, where are most tickets being reported from. And then we can work on the portal to help get people to respond to submit via the portal more and more. So you'll see it's again the same exact parameters, just the custom field difference, issue types, the additional selection JQL. I run this report and it's going to be a bar chart. And the bar chart you'll notice has each of the source types, but you'll also notice it has this none bar. So that's because I'm including issues with no value. So if I select false and I run the report, it's gonna remove that none bar and we have a bar for each one of the sources with the total issue count. And again, we have that expanded view to get that data in a little, to get that deeper data with hyperlinks to the issues. So we talked about uh, general reports. So we have general charts, we have general grid, we have a bunch of reports off of our performance, our workload, our capacity. Notice that these, these reports can be used across your, any, any uh, business unit in your entire organization. These reports can be used for any business unit to which you're doing service management and you're gonna leverage your service desk. In many places we call that enterprise service management, ESM. So you can leverage the dashboard for your marketing, for your finance, for your HR. Now the next reports I'm gonna show you are specific to IT and they're around specific problems and incidents. So our problem interconnectivity, this is, this is basically showing the links between a problem and its related incidents and a problem and its related um, change request and that change request story that the development team is working on. So all we need to do is enter the issue key for that problem. When I run the report, 
it's going to show uh, more of a mind map view. So this is another one of those in context reports where the center issue is the problem. And you'll see you get a hyperlink, you get the story, you get the created and resolved dates and all that stuff. And that's all completely customizable. You can enter whatever data sources you want into the shape. On the left here is uh, the related incidents. So this gives us all of our incidents. On the right here is our change request. So you'll notice it has a bunch of the change related fields like type, reason, risk, change start date, change end date. And then on the right of that is our story. So we, this is the work that our development team is working on to complete that change and to meet uh, that or fix that problem. What if I want to see that in a timeline? So you saw a screenshot of this on the slides, <clears throat> but we enter the key again. And we'll walk through this in some level of detail. So here, what you're looking at on the far left is the time, which was about 620, where the first incident for this problem was reported. Now, if I want to see all the incidents, because this is my list of them here, right? I could see that with this expanded view as well. So I can get that same list that's up there with the expanded view right in the timeline. And then about 810, our problem was created. Now, this is all using the relates link. Um, that's customizable as well. You don't have to use the relates link. You can use blocks. You can use anything you want to use, parent child. Um, there are two fields in the problem that I'm sure many of you will recognize, the root cause field and the workaround field, specific to the problem in Jira Service Desk. What we're doing is when a value is entered into that field, it is creating an event on the timeline. So 8.55, we identified root cause. About 9.15, we got our workaround found. About 9.30, we created that change request. So this change request directly associated with that problem. Again, the same one up here in this connectivity report. The um, change was approved around 10.30 and we created the story in the backlog. Again, same story that is up here. And about uh, 12.55, we had an emergency release. We released the story and the problem was resolved. So it gives you a comprehensive view of everything from uh, the first incident reported all the way through problem resolution. And then next is our incident timeline. So we have all of these incidents that were reported, but we might wanna see when they were reported. So we can get an idea as to maybe different departments are reporting them. Maybe they're experiencing them in different ways. So we can look at our incident timeline. And when I run this report, it's showing all of those incidents on a timeline. So this, these again are examples of those in context reports that we can do by creating timelines of events. So you'll see three of the items were created about 625, uh, three of the incidents about 655, one around 8.15 and one around 9.20. So this gives you an idea as to when those uh, eight incidents were reported. So Joshua also mentioned change management. So we talked about a few of those fields up in the change request uh, event item. And two, we're gonna report off two of them. So we're gonna go back to our general pie chart and our general bar chart. So I'm just gonna show you reporting off of those specific change fields. So we have the change type field. Uh, again, it's it's basically the same thing that you saw in that pie chart. So think about using this in Jira software as well. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just reporting off individual fields. Um, so you go ahead and you enter the field, you run the report, and it's going to give you that pie chart of the change types. And then if you want to see the change risk in a bar chart, again, same thing. I'm not going to include any additional JQL here. And I run this report. It gives me a bar chart of the change risk. And you'll see that the expanded views are available in both of these as well. So that concludes the demo portion of the webinar. Um, let's go back to our slides. Joshua, I think we're ready for some Q&A. Yeah, we've got some, some questions already queued up. And if you have any other questions, um, start entering them now and we'll work through as many as we can. Um, first thing that jumps out is, is this a marketplace app available on Atlassian Cloud? Yes, it is. Uh, this is uh, works for both server and cloud. Um, Evan was demoing from a local Docker instance with a running server. Um, but in Visual Script, everything is done um, as built in the port powered by JavaScript. So it, all the code works in either place. So all the reports you saw today would work equally well using Jira Service Desk on the cloud, if that's what you happen to be on. Um, next one. Uh, can I reuse reports across dashboards? Evan, do you want to take that one? Sure. So yes, you can. So the user, uh, every user will have access to that gadget and they'll be able to see the reports that are in your instance and they'll run them. 
They'll run them um, off of data that's visible to them based on permissions. And um, so you can use them across dashboards. And also that's the reason we have those general purpose reports, right? So you can run those, the pie charts and the bar charts, et cetera, across dashboards or within the same dashboard. Thanks. Um, and then from an uh, anonymous person, uh, we're trying to get our HR team standardized on a help desk. And HR was mentioned earlier. How could this best be used for that? Um, we can give you a, a quick response to that um, and, and um, a follow up after. Uh, we're happy to have a deeper conversation around that. Um, the, the quick response is um, that for your help desk, if you use Jira Service Desk to set up as your help desk, a lot of these same reports can be reused. So you can see how your team's performing at the workflow. You can see how the requests were being handled um, using pie charts. You can, maybe you wouldn't necessarily have an incident management, but things like onboarding or, um, you know, an employee exit, you can see how those metrics are working. If you don't see in context, how the overall company-wide onboarding is working. Lots of examples like that. Um, but a lot of these reports, because it's just dealing with with tickets inside of JSD, um, they're agnostic to what that data is showing. We would just be changing the labels here and there. Um, so that's a, a quick response. Um, we, again, afterwards, if you reach out to us, um, we're happy to, to follow up and show you more concrete examples of that. Okay. Uh, next one is from Jeanette. Um, you mentioned there were new reports coming soon. Can you provide more detail as to what is in your roadmap? Ed, do you want to take that one? Sure. So a lot of the reports that you saw today uh, are on the roadmap for the next few releases, with the exception of the six that you saw in the, uh, in the built-ins already. So a lot of the general purpose stuff is coming out soon, um, as well as like incident timeline, uh, incident link report, or a problem link report, um, mean time to respond, mean time to resolve. You'll see a lot of those things soon. Uh, the other stuff that we're working on right now are reports around customer satisfaction as well. So those are some things that we're gonna we're gonna look into. Great. And the next one is um, I saw there were some start and end date parameters in some of the dashboard gadgets. Uh, do you have to hard code dates? Can you put in JQL function or something? Um, it's a great question. Um, one thing we're looking at uh, right now that you, you're putting in dates for that gadget. Um, one of the features we're looking at adding in our roadmap. Um, as I'm mentioning, is to say something along the lines of, you know, last seven days, last 48 hours, to make that date range more dynamic. Um, that'll be coming in the near future. Um, but today, yeah, you're putting in a, a hard-coded date in that field. It's easy to change. You just got to put the dashboard, change the date string. But um, yeah, very soon we'll be able to do a, a more dynamic one with the JQL function. Great and, and just... And just to add to that, uh, so uh, we actually have that in the line chart and the area chart. So I think uh, we had that in the demo where you have the drop down the last seven days. Uh, you can also enter the additional um, JQL statements where you can add more information in there as well. Yep. Uh, so from Carlos, uh, when you set up dates in a report, uh, these local date times for the host. Ah, I see. I understand the question. Uh, when the report, report is run, the result in the report show different results depending on time zones. Thanks. Um, so the, it's going to be based off of the, the local user. So the time zone, and basically we're just getting it all from JQL. So when we request the result from the JQL query, it's going to give us back the time zone. So um, whatever the time is coming back from the JQL query is what we're going to display. Um, so yeah, there will be slight differences there, but um, the Jira database itself handles all that. So a really good question. Um, the next one from Jeanette is, are these reports part of JQL? How do you make them? Uh, good question. Evan, do you want to jump on that one? Yeah, so there, there's many ways to make them. Really, the, a lot of the reports right now are built, again, off JavaScript. Um, you know, reaching into the API, we have um, the ability to create reports off of queries. And then we also have the ability, which is a lot of the stuff is built around those parameters. So you create those parameters and you run the reports based off of those. And you saw that we had one parameter that was specific around JQL. So you can do that as well. 
Great, thanks. Um, and then Carlos asking, in order to get these results from Jira Service Report, do you need to have a Jira Service Desk license? Uh, yes, yeah, you need to have agents and um, we can send some follow-up information, but there is also some nuance to um, the reports are visible if you're not necessarily an agent, but there are certain reports that require you to be an agent to see them. Um, because when we run the JQL query, um, JIRA doesn't return the results if you're not an agent on that project. Um, but there's also an opportunity to um, show reports that don't necessarily require that. Um, but you definitely need to have a service desk license to run the report uh, from an admin perspective. And then there are some reports that require that license as an agent as well. And, uh, and all reports can be exported as well. So you can export them to PNGs or SVGs and you can run those in Confluence or show those in Confluence. Yep, good point. Uh, looks like our last question before we run out of time. Um, is there a size limit on how big the diagram you can build with um, uh, Yes and no. So yes, there's a size limit in terms of practicality. It's actually configurable. So we set a, uh, a 200 um, shape limit um, on any SDK, you can override that. You can actually put in a value and say, I want to make it larger. Um, but from a, a practical perspective, um, once those reports get you know beyond a certain number of shapes, you start to lose that visibility, lose that clarity, and it becomes hard to actually just comprehend what the report says. Um, so we do kind of enforce, both from a performance perspective, but also just from a comprehension perspective, we enforce a limit right now of 200 objects. Um, you can't override it, but it is as is what's in there. Um, there's no limit on the amount of shape data. Um, so the number of links in the data query. Again, we put in limits of kind of warning you saying, hey, you're about to request 20,000 issues. That's gonna take a little while. Um, the API's uh, wait limit, how fast they return their results. So we kind of have to wait for them to return the results to us and then do all of our processing. So we do encourage um, kind of warn you, hey, this report's gonna go make a big query. It's gonna take a little bit, just so you know. Again, you can say, I don't care, run it anyways, or you can go modify um, the report to kind of have a smaller data set. Um, yeah, really great question. Um, that's something we're definitely you know, working hard to make as efficient as possible. And yeah, related to that is Mario's question. Um, we're working on a feature that will let you do that to schedule the reports. Um, we, call them we call it delayed running. Um, so yes, yeah, so you could say you have a, a very complex report, run it overnight, cache that resulting SVG that Evan was talking about. Um, and then all the users are seeing that cache SVG. That's on our roadmap. Um, it's going to be coming up very soon. Um, you know, and we'll let everybody know when that's available. Um, related to that um, is one nice thing about the way Visual Script is set up is it's not running in your database in the sense of server-side code. It's all being done client-side in JavaScript. So the impact on the server only happens at that moment you're running it. Um, it's not constantly running in the background, taking up sources. So um, it is much lighter on your server than something you know running in the background in another database table or something along those lines. Yeah, hopefully we just answered that question, Kyle. Um, right now, it's every time that page loads, we're, we're rerunning those reports. Um, we're very near to releasing a caching mechanism where um, you'll be able to configure, I want it to run real time, I want it to run every so many minutes, I want to run once a day. You'll be able to configure how often that report is run um, on page load. Um, that's an upcoming feature very soon. All right, uh, we are at both the last question and at our time. So thanks everybody for joining. Evan, you want to take it back over? Yes. So um, yeah, again, so thank you so much for joining in your questions. We have a lot of scripts that we built into the tool and custom scripts that we created. We're happy to share those as well. Uh, we can schedule one-on-one -on -one time to learn more about your use cases and how Jira Service Desk with Visual Script might be able to help. We're always adding more to that built-in library. So we will be scheduling more webinars. So look out for those. Um, Someone from our customer success team will reach out uh, primarily to, to reach out and see if you have any questions as well as get some more information so you can mail you that t-shirt that you can see on the slide there. And again, from Joshua and I, thank you again so much and have a great rest of your day.